our Google Ads campaign, especially our PMAX campaign, is not doing anything for us. Mm -hmm. Because that is going to live and die. I would imagine you've probably seen Performance Max if we're oh, yeah. following that correlation. It's like when product syncs up, we look great. When product syncs yeah. down, we look bad. Because Performance Max is using that as an external traffic source. Yeah. <laughs> we're not necessarily driving any of our own our own users. Yeah. So and then and then this thing also gets blown up where it's like Ah So John, if I'm seeing like we've yeah. just launched that YouTube uh, sequencing campaign, um, mm -hmm. and I mean it's, we're not getting a whole lot of traffic, but if they're watching all the way to the fourth video, wherever, that mm -hmm. should be pretty good, high quality traffic, you would think. But I'm seeing in Shopify, like we're just not like top line numbers aren't moving, um, like orders are down or total sales are down. So I'm just like I'm having a hard time. Um, I guess with the client, I know the power of like a top of funnel strategy on YouTube and driving good quality traffic, like top of funnel and then them converting through brand or wherever they're going to convert. Mm -hmm. But it's hard for me to justify um, when I'm not seeing anything like top of line really move, like in terms of sales, like sessions have increased, conversion rates going down. Like, mm -hmm. I, yeah, if you can yep. help me with that. Ab absolutely. So here's one thing to note is when you're looking at these metrics in the back end, the difference between like gross and net or attribution, all this right here, uh, for example, is a total amalgamation of everything, mm -hmm. which means when you drove your YouTube channel or YouTube campaign, so to go to the online store. Yes, this is a different, what date range are you at? Um, this is the day, the date that you started YouTube. Okay. Yes. There was also a sale in between here, which muddles mm -hmm. things a bit. Exactly. Now, what happened on Product Sync during that time that lost 61% of its revenue? Um, I think he pulled back his spend. Okay. So those two two things are not are are going to cause, you know, this to not be a reliable um metric. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so while we while we're looking at leading indicators, like we started YouTube, online store did better. Okay. Now, what was the online store? Why was it getting better? Well, let's look at some some traffic sources. So traffic on direct is going to be down heavily. All attribution inside of here sucks. The direct traffic is things inside of the back end of Shopify by saying this came from product sync. Well, where's product sync? Product sync on our site. So we're sending our own traffic to ourselves. Yes, attribution Shopify is dead. That's why this number here is is going to be really hard to attribute. So sales by traffic source. Uh, being down indirect means that these here are going to be kind of eh, kind of a little bit messed up. This isn't real metrics because this means that there is an attributed sale, which would mean that these metrics here, which is kind of funny to think about, all of this, all of this revenue here, seven thousand, seven thousand, six thousand, six thousand, is only going to be able to be identified. here <laughs> and some here mm -hmm. so it's kind of interesting because this means i don't know but this means i know so you see how the brand went down 37 percent. so mm -hmm. our brand seems to be following whatever their product sync outreach is to bula outbrain influencer mm -hmm. so our google ads campaign especially our pmax campaign is not doing anything for us mm -hmm. because that is going to live and die i would imagine you've probably seen performance max if we're oh, yeah. following that correlation it's like when product syncs up we look great. Proxy okay. down. We look bad because Performance mm -hmm. Max is using that as a external traffic source. Yeah, <laughs> we're not necessarily driving any of our own our own users. Yeah. So and then and then this thing also gets blown off where it's like, ah, <laughs> you know, like awesome Easter sale people. Oh my god. Um, yeah. But now look at this though. Here's the delta. Look at the delta between these two. So this delta is the same as that delta, which is the same as that delta. But the so the 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 blue has stayed about the same. The blue was only lifted up by the purple pushing it up. Mm -hmm. So a lot of returning customers. Mm -hmm. New customer growth is if the blue is starting to crawl away from the purple. But we already established that this company makes majority of its first time sales through Attentive and Clavio. Where's it coming from? Dubula, Outbrain, not Pmax. But 
when we drive good old fashioned standard shopping as an example. And remember my glass ceiling meeting from from everybody uh, a few weeks ago when I said traffic sources will have different glass ceiling. Standard shopping mm -hmm. might might hit a NCAC and media efficiency ratio crash with like, you know, 10 grand a month. That might be the only 2% of available traffic that we have in direct response that wants to buy our product today. So only 2% of the available market that wants to buy your product at any given time. That may be 10 grand, might be 20 grand. I don't know. But when we start to push past that, we see NCAC drop or NCAC keep climbing up. Okay, we hit a point of diminishing returns, pull back. This though is going to be so heavily reliant on this dude here telling us what the hell he is doing on that channel there. Mm -hmm. okay, if you're going to have $200,000 swings in 30 days, nothing that we do is going to be is going to be helpful. But we should see though NCAC um, fluctuate 10, 20%, but at crazy volumes. Like $40 NCAC, 10,000 sales. $50 NCAC, 60,000 sales. $20 NCAC, 12 sales. So those things are, the NCAC is going to fluctuate based on the amount of volume. Usually higher volume, slightly higher NCAC, lower volume, slightly lower NCAC. So when we're looking at these big swings, do we know if there's a cost associated that he has here? No, I don't know. Okay. And you said that he's running Google and Meta, but he also mm -hmm. runs Tubula, Outbrain, those other type of things. Yes. Those, those do have costs associated to them. Yeah, and like affiliate, so that would obviously, yeah, it would have a cost. Yeah, I so don't know what it is. Yep. Yep. So that's what we have to do is we have to get, hey, what are you spending everywhere? Because we're going to be driving some high quality, good old fashioned traffic like you're doing on Meta, but it's also going to look like Meta. It's going to look kind of crappy. But if we can see that we can have a scalable, achievable NCAC, because once they get to your site, sir, it was a guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> once we get to your site, sir, they they buy. They go through the quiz and then you text them and boom, we got a new customer. Or then they start Googling Quora things. You know, is it good? And then Quora converts them on your native ads. Um, I don't know, but you know, all of the conversion paths that these people have, that he has figured out how to take, we want to increase the amount of traffic to it. We just can't, you know, say PMAX follow product sync and now we're good. Yeah, we've known this for a long time with the PMAX. It's just that even when we run standard shopping, like standard shopping doesn't, will also stick with the branded terms. So we can't get standard shopping to go cold or even show like impressions or whatever on cold terms like, you know, peptide cream or whatever. Like we get we get little volume there. So that also becomes hard. The only traction on like top of funnel cold stuff was mm -hmm. Pmax from even though it's half free marketing, you know, and branded terms. Okay. Um have we ran a non branded standard shopping? Yes. Yes, very good. Which one was that? Sorry, I'm going to pause camera because it's starting to go really robotic on my end. Uh, repair and release. Create. I think the first one. Yeah. They all should be. They all should be non-branded, but they'll still like branded terms will squeak in there. I mean, this is good. Yeah, like we got like really good amount of quality dumps here, but. Uh, Almost like next to zero conversions, which is like very high in CPA. Yep, and that's, that's what I'm saying is, oh. and that, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. That's okay. I was just going to say, we didn't see like a huge difference in Shopify, but we could have been looking at the wrong metrics and that's totally on us if we were, but. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing too, is like this one might've crushed it or it might be really broad, but peptides for skin, like that seems to be a good, like when we can attribute something that looks healthy, right? Yeah, it was a good term when we could attribute it, yeah. Yeah, so if we just say like peptides, again, we're going to use these as broken metrics, but signals. Um, so if we say peptides, like it's a, that's $100 right there. Like that's fantastic. And we probably, we don't even know what really came from this. But peptides was like, yeah, boom, 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 boom. You know, it was pretty consistent for 100 bucks, which we look at, you know, at an average order value of 126, that's a probably a really shitty att attribution, but we're still giving them a 1.25, even that we can attribute. But yeah, so this is a good indicator of good quality traffic. Um, what I would say is a good idea is to kind of go through and see like the themes. So it definitely seems like a peptide, neuropeptide, peptide, 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 uh, even though that was called signal, it does was peptide, skin care peptides, like all these are good. So if we kind of like turn this into a, you know, try to use a peptide um, and do like a, do a, T row as of like 
Um, this has got good click through rates, it's got really good C CPCs. Um, this would be a really good indicator to start to push into um, to see how that affects our NCAC totals. Because this is where we can see the interest, where they immediately buy on the site or, you know, they go through the quiz and we lose them and yada, yada, yada. But I think the our majority of our ad spend should be going towards, you know, increasing that good quality traffic. I think that PMAX is just trying to kind of get the get the return to users or people that are, you know, kind of Googling things about their about their brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is what's happening. Okay. All right, we will try Zoom shopping again. John, can so, I just ask one question? Sorry. Uh, yeah, good. Yeah. So, John, uh, in the sequencing campaign here in YouTube, uh, for the same account, it is uh, showing like a conversion in last seven days. But in North Beam, it is zero. Can you just help me why it is? Sure. Like, just for better understanding for myself. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So here's something to think about here. Um, when you're looking at the last 14 days, what you want to measure is the time lag between conversions and conversion by time. What the? Go away, stupid thing. So check this out. This is the last 14 days. Let's just count this here at day one-ish. The blue is the conversions. The red is the conversion by conversion time. So there is a time lag here between when they started to engage with our content versus when they actually pulled the trigger on something. And you'll see that this is uh, on day two, this started to work. You just didn't see it until day six. Mm -hmm. So that top of funnel is saying, okay, we're starting to hit some cold traffic. They're starting to engage with our content. Yes. When did they buy? Well, we spent the money on day one. They bought on day six ish. You know what I mean? I'm just using, I don't, I don't see the dates here, unfortunately, okay. Google sucks, but those are the things we look for is those, those kind of, uh, uh patterns i guess i would say those, those are the patterns that we're looking at is it's gonna be very much like meta we're hitting that cold traffic they're not just gonna see youtube ad be like oh my god and then bye you know we're warming them up that's why high frequency is good on youtube um which is what the the campaign does is this focuses on a high frequency because the structure of a sequence means you have to go through a high frequency um and that's what's really i hate this view that's what's really good here is they're seeing at least four. And if they skip, they still see. Uh, skip one. Oh, is that the same video? Same video. Same video. Okay. Um, I would rebuild this a well. No, it's okay. This is fine. Uh, this view base and inside this video, the whole story is different. Like they might look same from thumbnail, but yeah. they are totally different videos okay. with different story and all of the other things are different. Here's what I would do if we want to is make everything mm -hmm. below this line. Make everything below this line impression skips. Uh sorry, impression steps. So what this okay. means is that uh if they view, 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 and or, sorry, view, view, and then skip this one, if they also skip this one, they don't see that one. So what I would say is take these here and mm -hmm. change this to uh we can't rebuild. Damn. It, don't rebuild it. It's a big pain in the ass to rebuild this. Um, but if it's usually a uh, impression based skip, what it means is that they can view this one, skip, skip, and then they don't see that one. They don't see that one. So usually at any point in time that they skip, these are usually just impressions after this because I'm going to force you to watch the next one, see whether you skip or not. Especially here, it's like if I skip that one, they're not going to see anything down here because they have to view this one in order to continue on. They have to view well, not this one. They'll, they'll go through this one, which is great. But see how you did this one? Okay, so you skip the first one. You skip this one. You skip this one. Now you're going through all of it. So this is probably going to have the biggest path is step two, skip one. Step two, skip one. And then everything else. See how everything else has less impressions because this is the path that they are taking now because of that structure. Yeah. This is one that says, okay, did you skip, skip? Yeah, okay, this one's going to be it. Everything else is going to be like, you watched it, you watched it, you watched it, which is good. It's okay. Um, but this will just kind of skew those metrics into being like, okay, if you skip the perfect scenario and mm -hmm. then I force a video at every section there on out, do they come back on the third or fourth video? 
but we can't see that because we're just kind of forcing him through. Okay, you can skip everything, and this is the path. So all of our non-engaged users have to go through this path, and we don't see if we ever kind of pick them back up yet. That makes sense. But yeah, this is honestly in this this scenario. This is this is perfect. This is what we want. Um, a four hundred and forty three cost per conversion on impression based attribution, uh, which is I'm imagining is probably going to be it. Uh, oops, um, out of it type gauge view, gauge view. Yeah, step two adds to two five engaged views. Great, this is okay. Um, as long as we can confirm this is fairly cold traffic, um, which we can look at. Here's one thing that I always do in my in my YouTube sequences is um, is build another ad group with the people that uh, visit the site and then clone that uh, from the other one. So it's it's kind of a big pain in the butt, but you can clone actually an easier way. Just clone the campaign. And in the campaign here, have your exclusions be website traffic. So this one stays cold. Mm -hmm. If they ever click, they jump into the next, the other campaign, which is I'm a remarketing sure. one. Then what's nice is if you want to take that 250 a day and then the remarketing, let's say, is at 50 a day, it's like, all right, scale. Good. I can scale a 250 one. Not necessarily scale that could be going towards warm traffic that's on the site. Sequencing stays pretty cold though, which is okay. So we're we're okay for now. That's just like, yeah, all right. Everything that we're doing is actually good. We're starting to push, starting to scale. I wouldn't just dump all of our money into this one to scale it because this will turn more warm later on. Um, that's what Google does. Uh, so it'd be good to potentially kind of divide those into a prospecting only and a remarketing only. They have the same videos so that when they click, they jump into this campaign. And so you can raise those up 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, which means, you know, a $200 campaign and a $50, you had 10%, a 200 goes to 220, 50 goes to 55. So they can still kind of keep the same amount of engagement, but you're able to scale something that you know is prospecting traffic to hold that in CAC. Mm -hmm. This is fun. Thanks, John. I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks, John. Yeah. Thank you so much. You got it. Good stuff. Yeah, so John, our biggest struggle in this account is that we haven't been able to convert on cold terms. And we've had this client for probably two years now. It's been a real struggle. It just really converts on brand. Um, so we've had a really, really terrible traction on top of funnel terms. Okay. 